Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Now, two of my biggest weaknesses as a person, even as an investor, has been lack of patience and perseverance. And funny enough, I'm actually quite patient with other people, and I have been a tutor and a teacher in the past, and those sort of, or that sort of skill is very important in that line of work. But when it comes to self-patience, I've always wanted to be really good at something straight away. And sometimes that can't work, particularly if you're learning a musical instrument or a language. It does take time to become proficient. But it's because I lack that perseverance, I always give up. Now, about a year ago, I decided to pay off my mortgage and become completely debt-free. Now, at the time when I made this decision, I did not think of how much of an effect it would have on the way I prioritize my life and work. And at, before I paid off the mortgage, sort of as, earning as much money as I could was the main priority. And then the instant I paid off my mortgage, it all changed and money became less, significantly less priority. And what became really important at that point in time was addressing my biggest weaknesses, and that was patience and perseverance. About 10 years ago, I bought this 5,000 piece jigsaw puzzle called the Tower of Babel. And uh, when I was thinking of addressing my biggest weaknesses, this puzzle came to mind because if I could complete this 5,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, and I've only completed maybe one or two, two jigsaw puzzles in my life, and I thought if I can do this, this would be a really good self-patient and perseverance lesson. So I got it out and started doing it, and I thought it would take two to three months to complete. How wrong could I be? It's now been 10 months, and I still have not finished it. I'm almost at the point of completion. But a few times during this experience, I've had in the back of my mind, I'm just going to give up now. And each and every time that's happened, I just thought, no, I've got to keep going. And every single time that's happened, I've just given up for the day. And the next day, I've come back and went straight back into it. So here is where the puzzle is um, on the 23rd of February, um, 2021. I'm hoping to complete this within the next nine days. So I'm gonna have to work on a little bit more each day, I think, but it is becoming easier and easier because of course there's less pieces to go through. Uh, but even then, uh, it's still probably 500 pieces to go, I'm guessing, maybe a little bit less than that. So hoping to finish it within the next night. There is one piece missing because the dogs did get into the area that I've blocked off and they did chew up one piece, which is up the top there. I can see in the cloud there is that one piece missing. So hopefully this will be finished in nine days and this will be a momentous occasion for me because I did not think it was going to be this hard and I did not think it was going to take 10 months to complete. And so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. Some people, when they finish these sort of puzzles, um, put it on some sort of backboard and glue it onto that. That's actually a definite possibility, but I'm not sure at this point in time. But when I do finish it, it's going to free up a fair bit of time because I've been working on this for about an hour and a half, two hours per day over the past few months. Um, I've increased that from about 30 minutes a day when I first started it. So how does this all relate back to investing? Well, I think in my opinion, patience is one of the most important attributes you can have as an investor. And probably my biggest investing mistakes I've made during the past 10 or so years has been selling way too quickly because of impatience. I have numerous examples of this. And here's just six, and near maps, email payments, zero, uh, residence health, uh, ADO, NTO, whatever they're called, M7 Technologies. Each of these, if I had the patience and held on for the long term, would have been at most, or at least a 10 bagger. Some of them is not quite so, but NTO Technologies, two cents to 26 cents. Email payments, 40 cents to $5.15. This is not to mention a company like Fortescue Metals, where I held from $3 to $6. Sold out at $6 because it doubled in price. And if I just held on, I could have not only get a significant capital gains, I would have had significant dividends. And I think a lot of investors have examples like this. And I don't think it's a bad thing because it does teach us some invaluable lessons. But sometimes being patient, just holding, because you have to be patient, is not the right decision. 
selling can be the right one. And here's an example in my past, LBT. Now this is a company I was starting to buy in about 2013 and 14. I bought quite a few parcels along the way as the share price was hovering around 10 to 20 cents. Then in October 2016, FDA approved their piece of technology and the share price went from 20 cents to a dollar in a very short period of time. And I distinctly remember the moment I decided to sell when the share price just got above a dollar, I just went, well, I've made a fairly good profit here, I will sell. And it was the absolutely right decision for me at the time. So I think being patient is very important, but also knowing when to sell is even more important. In fact, knowing when to sell could, can be or is the hardest decision we have to make. So here's an example from the previous day. This is a blue scope steel. This is a company I've been grappling with whether to hold or sell. Um, so I do have some rules of when I'm gonna sell this company. So they released their results to the market on the 22nd of February. It actually looked quite good. Now they've had three profit upgrades over a three month period. And the last two profit upgrades, the share price hasn't done much. So I'm thinking there's a little bit of weakness in the market around Blue Scope still. Uh, the market is not expecting this really good uh, performance of the company to continue over the next six months, even though management is quite bullish about the next six months or so. So the results look quite good on first glance but I'm always waiting to see how the market reacts to the results of a company. Just because I think they might be good doesn't mean the market does. So the market reacted quite negatively to Blue Scope Steel's uh, results. And on open, the share price went down 4% in 20 minutes. Another time I was thinking maybe this could be a good time to sell simply because the way the market's reacting. But because I'm trying to teach myself patience, I thought I'll just wait and see if this continues during the rest of the day because just because it opens like this doesn't mean necessarily it's gonna close like this. It could actually open up or the share price could fall even further. So I thought I'll just be a little bit patient and see how the market continues to react. And lo and behold, the low of the day was just after open at $16.60. And then the buyers started to come in and we started to see the share price rise. And by the close of trading, the share price was actually up 2%, which was a 6% swing from the low of the day. Now there is a saying that amateurs open the market, professionals close it. I don't know if I actually agree with that because I do think amateurs and professionals trade throughout the day and there's no absolute time they will buy or sell. But I think in this sort of situation, there was an element of truth to that because share price did open lower at the you know, opening option and there would have been some nervous shareholders who saw it open lower and panicked and sold out because they might not have had a chance to look at the results and might have just assumed because the share price was down, the results must have been below expectations and that could have you know, driven the share price down. Even maybe some funds did that as well. But after about 20 or 30 minutes, some professionals had a look at the results and went, actually, this is quite good, and started to buy when they saw the share price down towards $16.60, and they started just to buy all the way through, and that's why the share price kept on rising. So in a way for me, this uh, learning patience did work out here because in the past, I actually might have sold out near the open because the share price did decrease. And based on the fact that I'm always willing to look at the market reaction, I would have sold out. And learning patience, just holding on to see what happens through the rest of the day, worked out in this situation. Now, Hammer Metals is another example where being patient or learning patience has worked out quite well for me. So I bought into Hammer Metals the day after a significant increase in share price. I bought at seven cents. Then for about a month, the share price was going sideways between about nine cents and eight cents. Uh, there wasn't doing much. There were quite a few holders who decided to sell out because the share price was just going sideways. I could have argued saying this is a really, actually fairly bullish signal. Share price is consolidating within this range and eventually it's gonna break out above 10 cents. That's exactly what it did. And a lot of those people who sold out argued that there's an opportunity cost for holding hammer when it's going sideways, you could be holding something when the share price is increasing. But you never know when the share price of hammer could have broken out above 10 cents. And they would have argued that that's, that's when they buy in. And I think a lot of times you don't buy in when that sort of breakout happens. 
So that breakout happened about three trading days ago, above 10 cents, and the share price has continued to rise. And last time we looked, it was around 14 cents, got to a high 15 cents on February 23rd, which was 100% of an increase from when I bought in. So this is another example where just being patient um, really benefited uh, in the medium to short term. So yes, patience is a very important skill attribute you can have as an investor. I think it's maybe one of the most important things. But knowing when to sell is just as important because it is the most difficult thing to do as an investor. And it's actually one of the reasons why I've started to incorporate technical signals uh, to determine when to sell out. So when in my momentum sentiment portfolio, I have technical sell signals. And whenever a company goes through one of those technical sell signals, that is a sell automatically. And that's really helped or improved my overall performance as an investor. So I really highly recommend trying to learn how to incorporate technical sell signals in your investing. It really does help. So that's all for this video, whether patience is the most important skill for an investor. If you have any questions, any queries, anything you want to argue with me about, leave it in the comment section and eventually I will get to answer them. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor, so even though I'm saying patience might be one of the most important skills for an investor, doesn't mean all financial advisors would agree with that. And if you need some advice about your own investing future, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's all for this video. Have a good day. See you later. Bye.